I mean, I talked to Curtis Yarvin and I disagree with him. You, you could talk to people all the time. Uh, J- J.D. Vance's record is very clear. And I, I don't want to like get too down in this rabbit hole. But to be understand what he said about the childless cat women was that he was saying that when you have children, that your society is better governed when your leaders for having children when they're not otherwise when they're not having children. I think you guys could agree with that, right? No, no. I don't. I don't think no? that's true at all. So, I mean, I, what I personally so, so can I just ask the hypothetical? Hold on, Good. let me. Fifty just... childless people and fifty people with families. Mm-hmm. Which group of people would make better decisions for the country the next hundred years? Charlie Kirk hooked up with Anna Kasparian and Jenk Uger of the Young Turks at the DNC. They did a lengthy debate. The entire thing is forty-five minutes. If you want to watch the whole thing, it's on the Young Turks YouTube page. I recommend that you do that. It's really interesting. There is more consensus and more agreement between them than you might expect. But there were some contentious parts, and I picked out a couple of clips that I think are the most interesting ones from this. So we're going to get into J.D. Vance, Anna Kasparian, Jink Uger discussing Charlie Kirk, Anna Kasparian, Jink Uger discussing J.D. Vance's childless cat lady comments. Let's check this out. I want to pivot to VP picks because, you know, it does appear that J.D. Vance was a bit of a risky pick for Donald Trump. And I I get why he chose J.D. Vance. I get the strategy behind it, trying to appeal to the Rust Belt voters. And also Trump was more confident thinking that he's running against uh, Joe Biden do you think now, in retrospect, uh, Trump made a bad decision? I think it was a great decision. I think that he was maybe expecting a little bit of a honeymoon as a VP, and he received a hurricane. He unearthed some you know, clips from my show and others about the childless cat stuff, which we could talk about, but I think there's more interesting stuff to discuss. But yeah, I mean, the last couple of weeks, I think he's been on point. He went on the Sunday News show, to his great credit, and Cenk, you pressed me on the donor thing. I'll press you on one thing. You say that Kamala didn't do a sit down interview because she didn't get her economic plan. I mean, she is the sitting VP. She could take some questions, right? No, I totally agree. You, I mean, you I got, think, you got I think it. She should have been doing the interviews, even if she didn't have all that stuff ready to no, go. No, she, 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 yeah. You got to talk to you got to talk to the press. Yeah, if you're, totally, if you're the totally. candidate, right? Even if you don't have your plans together. But to JD's credit, he sat down with three Sunday shows on one day and I thought he handled it masterfully. I thought he handled it beautifully. I could tell you what I'm hearing from Republicans that don't love Trump because there are Republicans out there that don't love Trump. JD Vance is a very sophisticated, smart, and appealing candidate to many of them that are making it more even comfortable about for Trump right now. And yeah, look, we're, we're going to see what ends up happening. Um, we've had a lot of coverage around both, both VPs. I think Walls was an awful choice. I think Shapiro would have been far better. I'd love to get your thoughts on that. Um, just looking at it from a Pennsylvania standpoint, we were like, do not, please don't pick Shapiro. Please don't pick Shapiro. And um, anyway, and I'm sure you guys feel the same about Vance, right? You were like, Please pick somebody else or pick Ruby or whatever. Um, I, I thought but Vance was an interesting choice. It's a regional pick where definitely in the Rust Belt. Let me also say this. You guys have written books before and published books, I'm sure. J.D. Vance has sold, sold, JD Vance has sold over a million copies of his book since the VP. Now, that's not about enrichment. It's about that's a million voters that are coming in contact with your story. The Netflix special has been top five since it's been announced. That is a way to communicate with voters in an uh, asymmetrical, you know, non-traditional way. What we find, though, is that VP picks can hurt you more than they can help you. Yeah. Sarah Palin, right? So as time goes on, I'm confident that J.D. Vance can now succeed in the one remaining spotlight, which is the VP debate against Walls. I think he's going to be able to hold his own, for sure. Look, much has been made about his uh, pretty offensive comments about uh, couples or women who don't have children. But the media hasn't dug into... Vance declaring himself a post-liberal conservative yet. And I think that's going to be a problem for him uh, because, I mean, he is rebuffing the notion of a liberal democracy. Well, or is he rebuffing neoliberalism? I don't feel that some is something entirely like different. No, I don't you know, like so, it. So, so maybe that's what he's rebuffing. No, I mean, but post-liberal no, but conservative is not putting, about neoliberalism. I think you're putting words in his mouth, but he at I least... I mean, he hangs out with the, uh, what's the Curtis name? Chris Yarvin. Yeah. Kind of on my show, yeah. And I've debated with him on my show because he wants something that I don't want. Um, but neo- neoliberalism, as you all know, is unfettered free trade, right. adventurous foreign wars, and a you know, very, very aggressive international policy, and also mass immigration. J.D. Vance definitely disagrees with all three of those things. I, 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 your question is what, as people dive into that? I just want to know if 
you believe that he is in line with the Curtis Yarvins who do not no, believe I, in our I, I, democracy? I, I, first of all, no, I, I don't. I mean, I talked to Curtis Yarvin and I disagree with him. You, you could talk to people all the time. Uh, J, J.D. Vance's record is very clear. And I, I don't want to like get too down in this rabbit hole. But to be understand what he said about the childless cat women was that he was saying that when you have children, that your society is better governed when your leaders for having children when they're not otherwise when they're not having children. I think you guys could agree with that, right? No, no. I don't. I don't no? think so. I'm going to correct what Charlie Kirk is saying here. What he's saying is not correct about he talks about don't put words in J.D. Vance's mouth. He's putting words in J.D. Vance's mouth. Here's what J.D. Vance said. Now, this was a couple of years ago. Let's give votes to all children in this country, but let's give control over those votes to the parents of those children. When you go to the polls in this country as a parent, you should have more power. You should have more of an ability to speak your voice in our democratic republic than people who don't have kids. Let's face the consequences and the reality. If you don't have as much of an investment in the future of this country, maybe you shouldn't get nearly the same voice. That is anti-democratic. And I'm talking small D democratic, not Democratic Party with a big D. J.D. Vance is saying there, you know, we have one person, one vote in the United States of America. J.D. Vance is saying that people who don't have children, their vote should count as less. And somebody who has a family and children, their vote should count as more. That's anti-democratic. Jade, what Jink, what Charlie Kirk is trying to say that J.D. Vance is saying is not what J.D. Vance said. They can spin this whatever way they want, but it's still wrong. And Charlie Kirk says that J.D. Vance was a great pick. Well, maybe he believes that, but right now... J.D. Vance's poll numbers are the worst of any VP candidate in history, they're saying. I think it's funny that all the right wingers say that, oh, it should have been ben Shap or, uh, Josh Shapiro and they're fine with with Walls. But and, you know, he was a bad pick, but he is polling the best. He has the highest approval ratings of any of the four candidates, Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, J.D. Vance and Walls. J.D. Vance's numbers are in the toilet. So can I just ask a hypothetical? Hold on, let me 50 just... childless people and 50 people with families. Mm -hmm. Which group of people would make better decisions for the country the next hundred years? I think that it, is, it is totally wrong to... I love what Jenkins says here. The smarter ones. Yeah, you could have a bunch of people who... I'm, I know a lot of people who have kids who are total idiots. <laughs> you know, again... Everybody has a right to vote, and it's one person, one vote. But just being somebody who has a family doesn't mean that you know more about the direction of the the country should go or know anything about policy in our country. There are smart single people and dumb single people, and there are smart people with children and dumb people with children. So just having a family doesn't mean you should be in charge of anything. To assume oh, that you don't, you don't think that. That, that having no. children makes any no. bearing on your politics. No, no, I don't. I, I think you don't think it does something to you where it, like you think about the next generation. And I think about the next generation all the time and I don't have children. OK, that's I fine. Think, I, I think mean, about educating our kids. I'm worried about the fact that so many children in America are illiterate and cannot read. I think about the future of this country all day, every day. Right. Like, I don't think having children is like the end all be all of whether or not you care about the future well, of this country. I love this I, country. I, I want you to be able to have kids. I don't want to make this about you, Anna, because I have a lot of respect for you. But I could tell you as someone who ha has had kids and has not had kids, it does profoundly deeply change. Yeah. And it, it changes your politics. It changes everything. And that's what J.D. Vance was saying, is that when a society starts having children, it starts to throw off the wiring of the multi-generational framing of how public policy decisions can be made. We're not going to agree on that, but I, I think it's rather common sense that when a society ceases to have children, a society ceases to exist. Another thing that drives me nuts about right-wingers like Charlie Kirk is they talk about so much about family and children and how having family, having children changes you and all of that. And then they don't give a damn about anybody else's children, only their own. <laughs> They only care about their own kids. Nobody else's. They don't want to fund schools. They, you know, once a, they, they are 
very concerned with the unborn, but then once the child is born, they don't want to do anything to help them in life with education or food or anything like that. So this stuff from these guys like Charlie Kirk really rings hollow. Oh, Charlie. Yes. So number one, look, everybody has a different experience. So uh, I have kids and I have the same exact way of thinking about things before the kids and after the kids. So, so, so that's you, so interesting. You, having kids didn't change your politics at all? Not one percent. Or your worldview? Not one percent. No. I so can having, vouch for so that. having kids didn't change you? No. I mean, I love my kids more than you could possibly imagine. So you didn't, you didn't learn something about humanity or like how to pass values down or... Yeah, no, I've or, been thinking about that all along. Oh, no, but, but, we're, but, no that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's incredible. I'm not doubting it, but like your why didn't change? Like why you fight so hard? Yeah, no, it didn't at all. Yeah, and because I kind of view, I mean, this is really corny, but I view the audience and the voters and the average American as family. Yeah. And so exactly. I was already looking out for So if, 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 if this is a gruesome hypothetical. And what Jen Kuger is saying here, that's just such a foreign concept, concept to a right winger like, Charlie Kirk, that you, you know, think about anything beyond yourself and your small group of your family and your friends. That Jink Uger cares about other people, you know, people that he hasn't even ever met before. But if a shooter came in and would you defend your kids first or a stranger's kids? Or are they the same? So, I mean, first of all, that's not going to change your opinion on health care. It's not going to change no, your opinion I mean, like, on obviously immigration. Obviously, defend your kids first, right. right? But of course you're going to defend your kids. No, but that's the point is that so you have an attachment to your kids, so it has changed you. So, of course, you have an attachment to your own kids, of course. Well, that's of the course point. I so attack them first. You, right? No, no, no. It, no, but it doesn't change my view on the world, on humanity, on politics, on policy. I mean, that, I guess. Right. But if you're if somebody if there's a shooting, of course I'm gonna cover my kids first. I get it. That's, but by the way, like in the Israel scenario, but I wouldn't say my, my entire, bomb other people's kids to no, protect no, mine. No, you right. know, I don't believe that. But yeah. my politics is all about protecting my kids. So okay, let See, me that's the difference. Hold on. Hold and on. actually but, that but goes you, to the you're, you're so sure that, about protecting everyone, right? And so but that goes to the core, Charlie. But and I, that's why this is such an interesting conversation yeah. between conservatives and progressives, because progressive ideology is Help someone you don't know, including non-American citizens. It, so, I mean, generally speaking, I want to help the whole world. But of course, you take care of, you know, you've got these. Cert- yeah. Non-American citizens are human beings. They this is the thing where also right wingers like Charlie Kirk want to make out like if somebody is an American, they're an animal or something. It's just a bizarre way of thinking. Circles. You know, you yeah, got your family, circles, nation, et cetera. When people don't have but my families. point is, you guys circle the wagons, and we think about everybody no, in, a, in a way that's empathetic. But, but this is the problem: is abstractions like that is how we end up invading Iraq and forget that our veterans are starving because we worry more about foreign adventures than so the immediate. And so, but that was that was for the military so industrial when, when, complex and the oil companies. But, that wasn't for us or our kids. Look at Lindsey Graham, people like that that have like very weird personal lives. They tend to not care as much about the immediate. They care much more about the foreign and the abstract. But I, I, I just, I'm, I'm curious though that you don't think that family formation necessarily creates better politics. Probably. I no, actually, not at all. I want to ask okay. you something. Right. So it's what you believe, right? No, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to talk. About you. No, it's okay. Put that aside for a second. What you personally believe, yeah. put that aside, and think about optics and political strategy. Do you at least concede? That politically speaking, when it comes to optics, it is not advantageous to accuse childless people in America of not caring about the future of the country because they don't have kids. Well, like that is an incredibly you know, offensive. People, are, you can say people, offensive yeah, you people find that offensive, but right? It's also a very pro-family sentiment too. Saying I love family. No, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm it's glad. I, that's also an accusation, right? Like. The idea that if you don't have your own kids, you don't care about family. Like, well, I'm no. not saying that. I'm what you're asking me is it smart politics? What he said was a couple of years ago before he was the VP, and I think that's important because first of all, it's even before he was a Senate candidate. But even if he said it today, I would defend the essence of what he was saying, which is that when you have a group of people that are not attached, their 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 public policy decisions are not immediately impacting the things that they cherish the most, and it's much more distant and much more detached, much more foreign, then public policy feels much more like playing risk than actually managing your home. And I think that's a big mistake. Conservatism at its best is trying to say, forget the abstractions. What's happening in the neighborhood? What's happening at church? What's happening with the family? 
But yeah, look, I, I share J.D. Vance's view on these things. Yeah, so I'll say one last thing, and then I want to ask you about Walls, because you asked me about Walls. Um, so look, I wrote a lot about this in my book, actually, Justice is Coming, uh, because I that's my main thesis on the difference between the left and the right, that the right is not indecent. A lot of people on the left think, oh, they're immoral, they're bad. And of course, the right thinks that about the left, etc. No, the right wing can be wonderful, but they have tighter wagons, yes, right? But, but right. do you understand that though? Do you know where that comes from? Yeah, I, get, I totally get where and, it comes I, from. And I get the energy where it's like, I want to save the entire world. I'm like, okay, but like, how about you try to not have 70 shootings a weekend in Chicago before you tell me you're going to fight climate change? Well, I, I say you, we could, you we see could that, right? no, no, I definitely I mean, say, but we could definitely do both, Charlie. It's, it's not well, either let's, or. Let, let's stop the shootings. Yeah, right? well, look, I can't, I would or, love to or stop like the 50, shootings. 50% of kids I would, are child legal people in this country, right? That's what that is stopping the shootings, right? Both the Chicago and the mass shootings and all of that. But don't hate the others. You know, if they're outside your wagons, you, they don't, they're not necessarily your enemies. They, it, they just happen to be in a little bit I, I, further circle away from you. And we're trying to, as progressives, we're trying to get you to empathize from outs with people outside your eyes. But okay. And I don't think uh, Charlie Kirk is capable of that kind of empathy that Jenk Uger wants him to see there. Um, going back to Anna Kasparian's point about is it good politics? And Charlie Kirk never actually answered that. You know, he says, oh, he loves his, how he views family and everything. But it has proved whether Charlie Kirk agrees with it or not is that's irrelevant. What J.D. Vance said has proven to be poor politics because he pissed off a ton of people who don't have children. Women, men, there are a lot of men who, who don't have children and they're upset about this and it is not boding well for J.D. Vance and Donald Trump because... Most people do not like, you know, majority of people, even if they are, you know, are people with families and children, they look at other people that they know who don't have children, who are loving people, good people who contribute to society and have every much of a right to vote as anybody else does. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to say way back in the debate here, Charlie Kirk talked about J.D. Vance's book hillbilly elegy. And I think it's really interesting that J.D. Vance had this compelling story. Now it's fake. He's not a hillbilly. He's from a part of Ohio that's not Appalachia. I live in West Virginia. I was born and raised in West Virginia in Appalachia. I know what Appalachia is. J.D. Vance is not an Appalachian. So you want to talk about, they talk about stolen valor. Well, J.D. Vance has stolen valor in terms of being a fake Appalachian. But he did have this compelling story in terms of the book that he'd written. And, you know, the media narrative was going to be how J.D. Vance rose up from poverty and all this, which, again, wasn't really true. But that got squashed immediately with all of the childless cat lady stuff uh, and him attacking single people. So I think it's interesting that, you know, that just that all went by the wayside immediately. I'm sure the Republicans thought, oh, he's going to be able to, you know, we're going to be able to sell. Now he rose from, you know, the backwoods to become this really successful guy and it hasn't happened. But what do you think about this? Who do you think? I thought this was a really interesting debate. As I said, you can go to the Young Turks page and watch the whole thing. I shared a pretty good chunk of it here, but the entire 45 minutes they get into some interesting things. And Charlie Kirk, I think, is an interesting character. He's not an idiot. Um, he, you know, they have a civil debate and there's some actual good points that he makes, even though I personally totally disagree with them. But who do you think won here? Do you think Charlie Kirk won the debate here? Do you think it was Anna Kasparian and Jink Uger who came out ahead? Um, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys say. Make sure to give me a like and subscribe. This channel is growing fast, but... More subscriptions, more likes, more comments is going to help me to grow even more. And I want to be able to bring out more content like this on a regular basis. So I hope you enjoyed this. This is Chris on Culture. I will see you in the next video.